All right, so hi, uh, name's David Lamb. Just want to welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about how crucial tire saving is. It's like one of the most important things in our racing, especially in the fixed series. A lot of times in the open series, but for like your ARCA series, your uh, 87 NASCAR series, your B fixed. C fix, C fix not so much because it's such short runs, but it does help to save some tire in them. But we're gonna go over how I save tires, and uh, many of you have raced with me. I usually hover around a 6,000 I rating, uh, a little over a thousand wins on oval, and uh, it's a lot of it came from um, learning to save tires. And today we're gonna cover that, go over some videos, throw up some uh, side by sides of the driving. And then uh, compare the tires after, I think we did 17 lap runs for this video. Just to show you the difference in how important it is and how quick you can actually destroy your tires. So we'll just, uh, we'll get right into that. I'll go ahead and pop up the video and let you guys uh, see what I'm doing. See the wheel input, see the throttle inputs. Um, and I'll cover slip angle and how it's not it's too hectic to even like fully cover. So I'll just give you a brief description of it. It's basically, if you're getting loose, you're out of it. So. All right. So today we're here at Charlotte Motor Speedway for the Ocker car. Just good track car combination. But I want to talk about tire saving. So we're just going to go through some of the things I do. And uh, maybe show a few things that people are doing wrong. And then we'll dive into exactly how I've managed to save so many tires and usually I don't lead a lot of laps I just close in and win towards the end most times so we'll just go through a brief description and stuff such like that like we'll start with like your steering ratio so there's a big big myth on i racing which is not true at all you can leave your steering you can run 8 to 1 10 to 1 12 to 1 whatever you want to run doesn't matter as long as you're not putting too much wheel input in while you're driving, you can run any any of these. Like there's some of the top guys that run eight. Then you got some of the sixty-seven to seven thousand guys that are running sixteen to one. And then there's changing the steering offset to their basically the wheel straight going down the straightaway. You don't got to do any of that nonsense. I am comfortable at twelve to sixteen. It's just my comfort. But you don't really have to do any of that. And then uh, brake bias is a huge part of my tire saving strategy. So for most fixed series, if the car setup is not crazy loose out the gate, I'm going to back this. I usually back it down as far as I can, as far as it'll let me. Typically what I'll do. And then 12, so I'll probably go... I haven't tested this car here yet, but we'll go negative six just to see what it's like at a 12 to one ratio. Got to adjust my view because I took this down to single monitor. We're we'll kind of just, we'll go out and run a race, race lap of how I would run if it was like towards the end of the race and I'm trying to win it which is not good for your tires. The biggest thing with tire saving is going to be your lifting points, coasting it, and then your wheel input. So if you go down through here and you blast it off in here and you're having to really crank the wheel like this to turn it. Every time you're, you're cranking on that wheel like that, you're just you're sliding the fronts. You don't want to slide the front tires at all. And then you're also heating up the rears by getting loose. It's like right now I'm going to crank this wheel like this running up here. Just It's going to murder the tires. It's absolutely going to murder them. So I would highly recommend never doing that. One of my biggest things is, is the early lift. Don't over rotate the wheel. And then when you're getting back in the gas, most times you're going to have to be gentle on it. Because if you spin the rear wheels at all, you're going to get them hot. 
But see, like, if you notice, like, right there, I'd, I'm never going past 10 o'clock, really, on the wheel. I want to keep it as close to straight as possible at all times. And over a long run, that's going to make a big difference. And say I'm not full throttle here, not letting the rears get loose. Yeah, you're going to lose some ground. You're going to lose some ground at the beginning, but you're not here to win the race on the first lap. You're you just want to be there at the end. The goal is learning to manage it to where you don't lose so much ground that you're going to have to overdrive the car to get back to the leaders. So right there, I tried to drive it in deep. Now I'm having to crank it like that. So I slid the right rear getting in, and then I had to over-rotate the fronts. It's just going to get the tires hot. Which on iRacing... Tire management's really more of not getting the tires hot. You don't want to get them hot at all. The hotter you get them, the less grip you have. So it's like, literally it's worse to have hot tires than it is to have lower percentage tires. Right there, we got a smooth entry. A little slide, not much. Solid laps. But, like, right there, I didn't make it, but I'm not going to over-rotate the front wheels to get it down there. I would just stay up here. I'm not saying this, this is how I would exactly race this place. I'm just trying to give you a tips here like like this this is bad see how it's past 10 o'clock no good so if you had something you're struggling with and you're you're always having to crank the wheel getting in the corner or something or if you feel like you're going in too hot just drag your brake a little bit get it to where you don't got to overtake over rotate that steering wheel and you don't want to get you don't want to get heat in the tires and you don't want to scrub the tires for Charlotte, I don't know if this is on the ARCA schedule this season or not, but early in the run, I'm I'm going to be down here, like just glued. I'm not I'm not going to float up to the wall up here, because if you're on the gas and you're pushing up that outside wall, you're just you're smoking the right front of the car, just smoking it. So I try to I try to just hang around down here. It's loose, low exit. Uh, early runs usually wait 10 to 10 or 12 laps and then I'll start to push and use all corner exit stuff but most of the time I'm going to be down here just saving like we could we could dive into like craziness with slip angles and stuff like that but the easiest way to describe for your, your slip angle is if you if the rear tires are sliding while you're on the gas, you're out of the slip angle. Like you're over over it, going too fast. So that's just that's the beginning. What I wanted to cover for the uh, for tire management here. But we'll go out. We'll run. Um, we'll run some hard laps. We'll see if we're here like that. That little bit of stint there, we wore off three percent on the right front. The biggest thing you want to watch is your your temps. It's just really for the overdriving we did for the few times, not too horrible. But we'll go out and we'll make like we'll we'll make like ten to twelve really hard laps, like just driving the hell out of it. And then we'll go out and we'll do uh, what I would typically do for a 10 lap run, just to see the difference. Because I knew right at the beginning of the race, a lot of you guys, if you're just hammering it on the outside, passing by everybody, and then you're like, oh man, 15 laps later, these guys all just come sailing right back by me. And you don't really feel like you're just murdering the tires, but you're already destroying them. That's why you see a lot of us fast guys, we won't even qualify. We'll just start in the back and drive our way up. Because everybody's up here racing each other super hard and we're just chilling. 
just chilling and riding. And then when it's time to go, we all start coming and it's like, I don't know, I've been called a cheater, all kinds of stuff, but it's literally no cheating. It's all in game, your inputs. It's all about tires. I really don't, I'm not used to sitting this far back on the car at all. Usually you can't even see my gauges when I'm running triple monitors. For this experiment, we're just on a single. So right now we're gonna go out, we're gonna, we're just gonna push it. Just gonna push it hard. Ah, uh, you can probably flat foot that. I just like this car because it's got that orange tape on the wheel so you can see the wheel inputs. That's why I'm using this car. They were bagging the gas earlier and we're, we're fighting it. But we're still moving, we're moving good. Like, I mean, it didn't feel bad pushing it like this. Feel bad at all. Dude, if this car was really this loose here, this would be awesome. We cooked it there a little bit, but you gotta imagine like we're gonna have other cars around us and stuff. But we're pushing. Trying to get to the front. Ah, I oh, got the wall. Got a little loose. Definitely uh, does not like a uh, heavy throttle response. We'll, we'll just keep going. We're not gonna reset for just a test session. I don't feel like it killed it. Just barely grazed it. Yeah, we're still moving pretty good. I mean, you can tell by the wheel movement that we're we're pushing, pushing as hard as we can right now at a manageable, without trying to wreck the car. Is really not happy when you're on the throttle over the hump. I will say, since I've been gone for a while, I came back and they got the multi grooves working again. It's been pretty cool that you have to qualify running around the top here. Top of one and two, bottom of three and four for a qualifying lap. Anyway, we just want to get a good good run in of driving how I see a lot of people driving. Then you have the guys will be up here at the beginning. So we'll go up here a few laps. Cause you can get in a throttle way early up top at Charlotte. Way early. I don't like the top at three and four, so I usually just come on back down to the bottom.
like so early and what this is doing even though it feels good like it doesn't feel bad up here at all it feels great because you're just you're hammered down but you're roasting roasting the tires by doing it late in the run maybe go up there I usually bottom feed the entire race here just preference of how I run it But I don't want to not run up here for just demonstration purposes. This is by no means a how to run this place right now. This is just nothing but tire course here. We're just talking about tires. And I'm not even really overtaking the wheel on this run like a ton. Back to the bottom, feeling a little slick. We'll try it. We'll try up here. Just to... Just to see where we're at. Not horrible. I do like this this setup here though, like if they have the track this hot. But I feel like they're probably gonna put this setup with a night race. And it's just not gonna be loose. So it won't be fun. Tire I would say tire savings a lot of just being patient. It's a lot of patience involved. Like you just gotta be a patient racer. Learn to run. 80%. Like 80% will uh, save you a ton on tires. Like we're starting to give up now. Like it's, the, the car's starting to give up a little now. Because we're driving like be a rookie, we're not we're not backing the corner up as we go or anything like that, or down the brakes back to the back. They so were just driving it in the same, find a little bit of brake. Rear tires getting hot. I would say this thing feels great here, though, with the iRacing and fix set. I think it's 75 degrees in the survey. You can see how we're, we're starting to give up on the right front some. Because it's not wanting to come turn into the corner anymore. But that's what we're trying to keep lifting. I don't feel like it should be that bad. We didn't even we didn't lift super late there. I mean, it should have still turned down in the corner. Well, we've been driving so aggressive, but we're taking off percentage and we're adding heat. Taking off percentage and adding heat and just being super aggressive. The right rear tire is just it's hot, hot right now. Touch throttle wants to come around. But I'm just doing this off of what I've seen people that I race against doing. Just trying to replicate 
some of the driving styles I've seen. Look right here, it's not turning down. People, they'll be turning the wheel like that, trying to get it to turn. Just trying to make it rotate because they've already just murdered the tires. Now we'll go in the garage, Let's take a look. Take a look at the tires, look at the lap times. Let's see, uh, see how it is. Garage. So we're 279, 268 with 82, 84. And shoot up the left sides a little bit. Last hot pressure, 57.8, 57.5. This is with the iRacing setup with my 12 to 1, negative 6, 60% brake bias. How many laps did we run right there? There's 10. 17 laps. That's what we got in. We'll actually have to watch the tracker this time so we know how many laps we've ran to see if we can uh, show how I would actually run this setup in a race. And I think what are, these are usually like 45 lap runs. It's usually what this uh, this series runs. 76 with this. This would be a good combo. Alright, so now we're going to go out and we're going to run Charlotte how I like to run Charlotte, which I did really good in the B car here when we were here earlier this season. Got a win, uh, a lot of good finishes in 4,000, 3,000 strength. Well, I won a 3,000 and finished top five in a bunch of 4,000 SOF. So if you're new and you're, you're plateaued and you're trying to figure out how to save, this should help you, but just pay attention to the orange tape on the steering wheel and I got the brake and throttle up there and I'll just show you how I would run this and the amount of wheel that I'm going to put into it early in a run. We don't want to. We don't want to come off too high. We just don't want to slide that right front tire here at all. I just try to bottom feed it as much as I can. Now we're not going to set the world on fire on lap times, by no means. If you're watching that wheel, we are, we're barely going past 11 o'clock. Just want to keep it, just don't want to over rotate it. I think that was what lap four of the run, so we gotta go to what 43 to get 17 laps in. And you you could late arc it more if you want. As long as you're not over rotating the wheel, like you could enter higher and rotate it more, but this is the line that I found at this place that works for me over the course of a long run. And notice we haven't had any a whole lot of turning it back to the right or anything so we're not sliding the right rear tire around.
I might throw up a comparison, put them side by side so you can really uh, see the differences. But when you're constantly getting beat on races like this, this is how the guys are beating you. And you can run decently hard and still maintain this amount of wheel input. A lot of it is just being patient though, like you notice so I'm not I'm not accelerating too soon to where the car's pushing up out of the corner. And that's saving the tires. Just keeping it down here. And yeah, you'll see guys will get out a second and a half, two seconds, sometimes up to three seconds on you. They'll get out three seconds on you. But after 10 laps of doing this while they're murdering them, you, once you start going, you tick that three seconds off pretty quick. You just got to keep it in your head, like, don't push, don't push, which is hard. It's hard to watch people drive off. It's very hard. Now, in the old days, with the old cup cars here, we'd be clutching early in the run just to let it coast and save tires. Just let off super early clutch, save the fuel and tires. Then yeah, we'd get we'd get up to eight, nine seconds back and still run down the leaders. But if you're watching the orange tape on that wheel, we'll see how much I'm turning. Not a lot. Kind of let it float in and turn itself. But right there, I missed it a little bit, but I didn't. I didn't over rotate to get it down. I just stayed where I was at. And like, if somebody behind you is, you can tell they're just wanting to go. Just let them go. Let them go early. You'll get them back. And it's it's patience. This is the easiest way I can explain to save the tires. Like, I don't need to break out a bunch of diagrams for you. Just straight up show you. This is how you do it here. Or anywhere, any track, you just figure it out. Like, the smoothest way to get around and maintain the relative speed. Like, short tracks, it's hard there, but it's, just back your corner entry up and don't light the tires up on exit. And you'll make you'll make good speed. So we're we at 40, closing in on the uh, where we were at almost 17 laps now on this set. We'll pick up the pace just just a little bit, just to see where we're at lap time wise. Compared to the other run, we're not gonna we're not gonna go crazy with it. This would be about the point where you start seeing the guys that are flying at the beginning. They they would start coming back to you. Because you've been smart, not ever rotating the wheel, easy on the throttle, and just been patient throughout the run. All your, all your super fast alien dudes and stuff, they're not running 100% ever. Unless it's like a five lap shootout.
They're usually 80 to 85 percent the speed they're actually running around the track. I think if we finish this lap, we should be about the same as we were on the other run. We'll go one extra lap just to see how see the tire wear difference. It's how bad it is. This should be the that should be the last lap we need to run on that run. I think we ran four laps before, three laps before we started counting what we were doing. Coming a nice easy stop. I right, look at that. Look at the difference. The other tire wear was so much worse. What we were 80 or 92? No, we think we were in the 80s or something like that. I can't remember. We'll have to just side by side here. Here in a minute, way better, way better tire wear. But you can see we did 31.1, 31.0, little mess up there, 31.2, 31.3. Look, just bagging it down. Like we're not, we're in the 32s, just chilling. Look at this right here, though. 32.3, then 32.5 on that last lap. 32 2, 32 0, 30, like over time, this adds up. This adds up huge. And it's simply from just being patient, back the entry up, don't over -tape, over rotate the wheel, and don't step. Just don't mash the throttle. Like, just ease into the throttle. You know, early in the run, don't be trying to fully use up corner exit. Because corner exit, especially at Charlotte, corner exit is just. For some reason, it's just like it's like sliding your right front tire over 30 grit sandpaper. It's just chewing the tires off. So you can see, like over the course of the run, I mean, it it shows. I mean, we're in the 31.9 on lap there. We're still 31.9 later than 00. We probably could have did another O there, but we being conservative. Like after lap 20, this is gonna pay huge. It's gonna, it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be like them dudes that was up there. There's a flying. They're gonna look like they're sitting still. And yeah, you might have to work down a three second gap, but it's easily feasible to do. Shouldn't you shouldn't not be able to close the gap. So that's that's my tire saving tips. Like right there, I man. That's that's the money spot. That's what you need to be doing. So if you just practice those habits, our kids came in. But if you put all that together, you will learn to master the tire saving. Uh, like I've switched over to running some of the 87 races, and at Homestead, you really have you have to drive the car at almost 50% for the first 30 laps in order to uh, be fast for the last 15. It's crazy. Like everybody's just riding the bottom, coasting, super slow. It makes kind of for a boring race because everybody's just chilling on the bottom. Yeah, we'll side by side these uh, here in a second, and we'll uh, show you the comparison between the first run and second run on tires, like how much you're gonna have left for the last. What would it be? Twenty-three, no, twenty-eight laps. It'd be twenty-eight laps left in this race. I think. I think it's a forty-five lap race. So to see how much better off you're going to be than that guy that was just straight up flying at the beginning. So we'll do that. Um, and we'll talk through a little bit a little bit of other things I do, especially with your brake bias. We'll go ahead and go through brake bias now. So this, if you have it here, or whatever the stock set is, do the stock setting. I think it's 68 stock, 68 stock. So it's still at 68% basically towards the front of your car. So front brake bias, the more to the front you have, the less rotation from the rear you're going to get. I like to rotate my car with the brakes on, like a light brake drag, not like mashing the brakes because you don't want to transfer the load too fast in the front. 
but I like to run this as low as it'll let me run it. And I don't think I don't think you can adjust it minus. You might be able to adjust this from minus three percent in car when the uh, race. But I, I don't have a set lock to fix, so I don't want to say that and then that not be the case when you're fixed racing. But definitely, pretty much every fixed series, back the brake bias, as low as it lets you go. As low as you let it go. So that way when you go to drag them brakes, it helps rotate the car. Then if it's getting too loose for you late in the run, just run it back to the front. You know, Just go like four clicks at a time until you don't feel the looseness anymore on entry. But this, this is going to help rotate the car. Which in the long run is going to keep you from putting less wheel in. Biggest thing is keep the wheel from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock at all times. That, that'll save your tires a tremendous amount. I do know that the heat is way lower. We're like 20 to 30 degrees lower on the heat in the tires, which heat is huge on iRacing. It's, it's almost it's more important to keep your tires cool than it is to worry about percentages almost. It really is. And the more you rotate the wheel in the front, the more heat's going to be the tires. The more you stab that throttle and get a little loose off the corner, the more you're just going to keep heating up this right rear. And once you do that, you're going to have to back off some. Let it cool back down. That's where a lot of people mess up once they get it hot. They just don't back down and completely roast that thing to where it's almost not able, not able to drive it. A lot of your lower guys are going to spin out in a series with no cautions. That's that's the death penalty essentially if you spin out like you're you're done for automatically. All right, so that's the end of my uh, tire saving video. If you have any questions, uh, just leave a comment or message me, and I'll uh, work with you. If you want to set up like a um, coaching session or anything, you can find me on iRacing under David Lamb. I think that's the yeah I think that's the name that it's under. I don't think it's the David William Lamb. I think it's the David Lamb count just hit me up on there and uh i'll hop in a session with you and walk through it with you hope you guys enjoyed the video if you could please subscribe and leave a like i appreciate it